If you f***ing suck at fishing, then this is the video for you. I'm going to show you three different things you need to do to catch more fish every single time you're out on the water. Okay, people are not going to go fishing every day other than like if you're like Tyler's real fishing in the first in the number one understand where the fish hang out more often than not fish are near some sort of structure this could be anything like a dock or a broken tree or even a rock so make sure you're casting in these areas number two don't be okay the second problem is snagging that's the second be problem. afraid to size it down fish are sometimes picky so if you're having a rough day fishing maybe size down your lure because sometimes the fish prefer a snack over a full course meal and lastly number three it's fishing not catching sometimes the fish just aren't hungry and you can go a whole day without even a bite so be patient and enjoy yourself out on the water because when you do get that bite it's the best feeling in the world oh my god okay, guys okay well he just said it's true not you're not gonna get a fish every single time you're just gonna have to wait out until you I just can, cast like... it and i'm snagged it got me thinking like there's a lot of people would start jerking it like this it doesn't work okay you can get those devices on the end you can slide down your line but that's not the best way the best thing to do is you hold your rod up so the tension's on it you grab your line and you pull it back like a bow and arrow keep the tension on the rod you let it go snaps comes right off there's my there's my there's my lure I don't believe that. Let me let you in on a little fishing secret. These things right here are f***ing awesome. You slap one of these guys on a jig head and you are not going home skunk. I'm telling you, just give it a cast and before you know it. For, in the first place, I don't really use lures. I don't, I don't, I don't really use lures. Lures are like, kind of like, they're just junk to me. I will try to catch one soon with a lure. So. The fish just can't resist, so make sure you save this video for your next fishing trip and coming at you with a cool no, you. fly fishing tip. As we all know, you'd never want to reel your leader all the way up into your reel when you're done fishing. First of all, it makes it impossible. If you suck at oh, catching fly, bass, fly then this fishing. is the video no. for you. I'm going to show you three of the best lures you can use to catch more fish every single time you're out on the water. Oh my god, guys. Number one, the good old jig. This is hands down one of the best lures you can use any time of the year. I personally love to pair it up with a Kai Tech or a Craw, but you can throw this thing on its own and it will do just as good. Take my word for it. Number two, the Senko. These things come in all types of colors and they are my go-to bait when I'm fishing a new spot. They are perfect for covering water and bass just simply love them. So the next time you're having trouble getting a bite, slap one of these guys on and I promise you'll pull one out. Bass fishing pros say you can always catch them on a jig. I tried fishing jigs all the time and I hated it because I never seemed to get that many bites. And when I did get bites, bass would come off easily. Okay, I'm about to put specifically salt water. Alright, I hope we can actually find some stuff here because the other one I didn't like just because it was all fresh water. So please be salt water. This is the most common rig on the Gulf Coast. It's a popping cork. Let me show you how it works and how we use it. There's two main reasons we use a popping cork. The first is to suspend our bait off the bottom. The second is when we pop it, it helps to attract the fish. You can use a live bait or a lure under your cork. Let me cast it out so I can show you it in action. Now all you're going to do is cast it out and give it a few pops so it can attract My personal guess is that why they go for it is because of the smell. It's not because it's alive as well. It's probably that, but the, the main reason is because it's the smell. The fish, just like this. All you do is pop it hard so it makes a bunch of commotion. When your cork goes under, it means that you got a fish. Okay, we're getting a bite. Oh my god! This is the most. I got a pearl white gulp shrimp and a one fourth ounce jig head. This is the easiest way to catch a flounder. Let me show you how. So, all we're looking for whenever we're fishing for flounder is. I want this is exactly flounder. why you don't catch any fish, and the reason might surprise you. Whether you're saltwater fishing or freshwater fishing, the most important decision you ever make is choosing the right. You're saltwater fishing. Okay. Taking a hook from the shark makes me feel like it's terrifying. Because once, if, if you get chomped by that shark, Let's just say, say goodbye to you. Whether you're saltwater fishing or freshwater fishing, the most important decision you ever make is choosing the right location. Choosing the right location is the most important part of fishing, and I'm going to show you how to do it. When fishing in freshwater, try to find lakes, rivers, and streams with lots of structure and cover for the fish to hide on. This is far more important than trying to find the right lure or the right bait to catch the fish. So okay, like that? I don't need such a big, 
the big ass hook. Like, I think it's probably as big, like, my entire hand. Like, why do you need such a big hook in the first place? You're not going for, like, a blue whale. You're not going for that. A blue whale would need, like, a, like a size 200 odd hook. That's literally probably like the size of a house. Like that's how big you need for us a size two hundred out hook. Like, what people are you that using a size like twenty out hook? You don't need such a big ass hook. You only need like a good like a size like six out hook. Lure or the right bait to catch the fish. Saltwater fishing though is a little bit more difficult. Try to find places with lots of bait fish and lots of structure, cover, and current. A good place to find big fish in salt water are deep boat channels. You can usually find deep boat channels by looking for where the big ships and big boats are driving through. In these areas, it is usually 20 to 40 feet deep. In these areas, there's usually a very good chance of catching a large game fish or a shark. Another. Okay. Actually, um, on my Arroyo City fishing, there was a boat. If you guys saw in the, in the clip, there was a boat passing by. And which, in that reason, I caught one fish. And I knew I I had the biggest feeling ever when that, that happened that I was gonna catch a fish because usually what I think is that whenever a a boat goes past by there's there's schools of fish going all all over the waves that's why I thought there's fish. The great location for saltwater fishing is the beach. There yeah, like that, like that's supposed to be how you're supposed to take out the hook. You're not supposed to take out the hook with the, your bare hand. I will literally have like. A minimum of 70% chance of it biting. There are tiny fish and giant fish on the beach, and it's pretty easy to catch. That's scaring the living crap out of me. I'm skipping it. Another thing, why do you need such a big lure? Like, there's too many questions I'm asking. Like, why do you need such a big lure? And why are you not that close? To, I mean, I know the ocean is dangerous, but why are you not that close to the water? You're supposed to cast it even further. First cast. On the jet, huh? On the jet, he's actually caught a fish within like the first three minutes. Like, I didn't even catch it in the first five minutes, it was like the first two minutes. Yeah, look at that hook set, holy crap. The old shed. That's a nice one. I'm, pr is, I'm pretty sure that's a sh striper bass. Yes, that's right here, the striped bass. That's a striper. That's a really good Today, we're going to be using gummy bears to catch... Why? Why is this, bro? I swear this kid uses whatever bait you want. It's like, it's like, okay, wood works, metal works, gummy bears work, marshmallows work, a dead bear works. Like, just use shrimp. That's all you have to use. Fish. Let me show you how. All we're gonna do is take one of these gummy bears. We're gonna bite it into a little bitty piece. Okay, does it not harm the fish in the first place? Like, you're literally like giving fish sugar. Nah, these fish are gonna get the mad sugar rush. <laughs> Bro, why are... My brain is hurting just looking at this. First, this guy gets a gummy bear, he takes a bite out of it, and now he's putting in the hook. You need to go get some fishing training. Just like that? With saliva? Are you serious? Then we're gonna hook it on a tiny little hook. Let's go ahead and drop it down and try to catch one of these spade fish. Spade fish? Okay. All we're gonna do is let it drift with the current and hopefully it'll go right into one of their mouths. And we're hooked up, y'all. We got ourselves a nice spade fish right here. He's looking crack. And second thing, why is bro under a uh, oil? And there we go. He has an octopus in his mouth. <laughs> Check this out. This guy has an octopus in his mouth. 
and I caught him on a gummy bear. That's Bro, caught him in a two and one bait. So you threw your cast net, you caught some bait, but you also caught some jellyfish. Maybe you don't have a net to scoop them out or anything like that. Let me show you how we're gonna get them out of our bucket using just a water bottle. Take an empty water bottle, put it right down here on the jellyfish, squeeze it, and let it suck them right in there. Boom. Just do that until you get them all out of the bucket. Just grab it with your bare hands or just grab some fucking pliers or some shit. I don't like buying these because they fall apart when you try to hook them. Here's how you save them. Okay, if you're gonna buy bait like that, I would rather you guys buy fresh, not frozen. Because I had troubles casting with frozen. Like, frozen is like you need a bait elastic to wrap it around. With fresh, when I did my jetty fishing video, which is a recent one, which is this one right here. I use fresh mullet. I usually use frozen and it works so much better. It like lasted like a good hour or two, but then it fell off because, you know, bait falls off. Reserve them, get a longer shelf life. You want to thaw them out quickly. I'm going to open them up, stir them around there, break them all apart. Get them all good and separate. You want to drain the water into like a bucket, save it for the garden, fertilizer plants, and then throw them out on the concrete for a little bit, let them all dry out, get that excess. Just keep them in the bucket. Keep them in the bucket. I'm in pain. Water off. Get yourself some cardboard, napkins, paper towels. Why do you need to put napkins? Just get the hook and then throw it. Them up. And then saw them. Bro's like, hey, Skipper. He just wants to get like, like two boxes of sh of salt and just dump it on the fish, like. You don't need that much. Just like you would some churros or you know, some black seasoning outside. I'm skipping this one, bro. Very slow. Like a live squid or a dying dead squid. But this little lead head is going to allow it to sink very slow right in front of those fish's face. That's only. Why is bro in front of the 10 camera? 10 or 15 feet below the surface. The, the next tip that we have is going to be my favorite way to catch a calico bass, and that's gonna be with a plastic lure. Now this is a little bit- We're freelining live shrimp for whatever bites. I have a number 10 treble hook, some 20 pound fluorocarbon leader, and a nice live shrimp. We're gonna hook him right in the top of the horn, just like that, so he doesn't die. Now we're gonna take this guy, toss him out here next to his concrete. Okay, usually I go to, to fish. When I get live shrimp, I don't, I never got live shrimp. But I had gone live shrimp once, and to be honest, it's quite expensive. I'm gonna be honest, it's quite expensive. No. Here are four tips in 13 seconds to help you catch halibut from the surf with the lucky crab. Tip one, after your cast, reel in slack line ASAP. Tip two, give an upward or downward raw twitch. Tip three, do as slow of a retrieve as possible. And tip four, set the hook. Subscribe for more tips and tricks. Here are four tips and Okay, I might actually have to use that. I'm gonna save it. <laughs> I hate putting worms on the hook, which is why I always opt to get fish bites. I'm showing you the best method on how to catch saltwater fish easily. Oh my god! Those teeth are mad as it all comes down to the bait, and that is the shrimp, aka the candy of the ocean. After the bait shop, we head to the ocean. Isn't that the main name of the shrimp? Just the king, the king of candy of, of the ocean. Simply put it on a hook and make sure you don't put it through the brain of the shrimp so it stays alive and cast out. I'm freezing right now. Let's go. Let's get out of here. One more, one more. Right, one more. One more fish. We're out of here, cause we're good. Oh, it's oh, easy. Big one. Don't lose them. Hey, loosen up that drag. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, just, just uh, every time whenever I hear the drag pull, that you know it's a big fish. And I'm happy oh. that he's doing the correct way, unlike me. I I go too crazy. Oh yeah, that's guys. him. Oh my god, he's skin hooks. He's skin hooks. Let's go! Ah! This fish had some gnarly teeth. 
and today I'm showing you the best method. Okay, that's a really good sized blog from. The biggest mistake with circle hooks for surf fishing is using hooks that are too big. You can always catch a big drum on a small. Okay, this, that size is almost nearly the size of what Alejandro got, which is, if you guys saw, we did a battle. It went pretty well, to be honest. It, it was actually kind of a good experience what we had, and for some reason, people want to see another one, but I don't know when. Small hook but you rarely will be able to catch a pompano on a big hook. Sizes one aught, one, two, four, and even six are all fantastic options. Okay, I like how they put it like a size comparison to like a cord. A cord is like this big. So the size six aughts like, it's tiny. Eating the hook in the bait will increase your hookup ratio as pompano are sight feeders. I'm pretty sure that's why I'm, fu I'm fucking it up most of the time. So. Right, if you can hear me over these waves, I'm throwing a cast master spoon made by Acme Tackle. It's not usually what I throw, but everything else I've been throwing has been cut off by Spanish and Blues. This is what I got left. We're going to see what we can catch. I think some people probably give me crap for this, but I always put a nylon coated wire leader on. Like I said, I get tired of stuff cutting me off. I mean, it still happens on the rare occasion if something big enough gets a hold of it. Uh, but I, it I've never noticed a difference in my hookup ratios, the amount of fish I catch. I put a little swivel on there just so this can spin freely without giving me a bunch of line twists and messing up all my braid. So, Let's see if there's any fish over here to the left. I'm not doing anything crazy with the retrieve right now. I'm just kind of doing a steady retrieve. There it is. It's a little bit better oh. fish, I think. Better, it's caught in some current. What did he got? Here. Please be Spanish. Probably just a blue. Have you tried to aim for Spanish? Yep. Another blue fish. Oh, blue fish. That has a really nice size. Alright, I'm going to end it here. So thanks for watching. I hope you guys are going to see me fishing soon. I mean, I've been waiting. Like, as you can see, I have the rods in the back. So, yeah, that's all for today. And. I just did like a little video just for to be a little active and yeah, until next time. See you later. Whoop bam!